Hello, and welcome to Volunteer Canada's Local to Global Integrating the Sustainable Development Goals in your Volunteer Program. My name is Marissa Jalfusa. I'm a project consultant with Volunteer Canada, and my co-pilot today is Deborah Pike, uh, Director of Stakeholder Engagement and Knowledge Mobilization. And uh, so she will be helping us to navigate the chat and uh, letting me know about your questions and your comments while I facilitate today's uh, session. Welcome and thank you everybody for taking the time uh, to be here on this uh, very important topic. Um, essentially, uh, what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at how uh, the sustainable development goals can play a role in um, supporting the, um, the engagement of volunteers in our programs and also uh, helping us to um, collectively get together and help to achieve them. Uh, so just before uh, we get started, um, I'd like to know, just to get a sense of who's in the room, if you could tell me how familiar are you with the sustainable development goals now? Um, excellent. So it looks like we have um, a good group of you that are somewhat familiar. And uh, if you're not at all familiar, no worries, because I'm going to go over them briefly, how they came about. Uh, the purpose of them and what have you. Uh, very good. And we have a few very familiar, which is amazing. Uh, very, very glad to hear that. Love to hear your comments if you're doing anything in your organizations. Uh, okay, very good. So um, I'm just going to keep moving on. Okay. There we go. All right. So here we are. And uh, so before we get started, just a word about Volunteer Canada. Volunteer Canada provides national uh, leadership and expertise around volunteerism to enhance the participation, quality, and diversity of volunteer experiences. We're very privileged to do that with a wide uh, array of uh, partners who help us uh, to achieve that mission. And those include volunteer centers, businesses, volunteers, um, educational institutions, government, anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, anyone who has uh, an interest in the voluntary sector. And uh, the objectives today are um, essentially what we would like to accomplish today is that by the end of the webinar, you'll have a sense of the answer to these four questions. So first, what are the United Nations 17 development goals? What are the benefits of integrating the SDGs? And that's sustainable development goals. From now on, I'll be saying SDGs into your volunteer program. And how can you determine which SDGs most closely align with your organization's mission and activities? And we'll look at, at a couple of examples, one nonprofit and one business that uh, did the exercise of identifying um, which SDG goals they were most closely aligned to and where they could make the greatest difference. And lastly, what are some concrete and feasible ways that you can integrate the SDGs into your volunteer program? Okay, very good, off we go. Now, this, uh, this webinar is part of a larger uh, project called the Volunteer Factor and Sustainable Development Goals Project that's funded by ESDC, uh, <clears throat> or Employment and Social Development Canada. And essentially, this project has three main goals. The first is to raise the awareness of the voluntary sector around the um, sustainable development goals and how related they are to our sector. Secondly, is to uh, support the implementation of the SDG framework within uh, the voluntary sector. And thirdly, is to support collaboration um, based on the voluntary, uh, on the SDG uh, framework uh, between organizations that, uh, that are uh, aligned or are, um, share a similar uh, interest in a specific um, sustainable development goal. 
Okay, now, <clears throat> so that'll be, so uh, some of you will be uh, familiar with these. Now, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals were um, adopted in 2015 uh, in the United Nations General Assembly. And um, it was, they were adopted by 193 member states, of which Canada is one. Canada is actively engaged in um, achieving the sustainable development goals. Uh, and ha they have a website and what have you. And uh, at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll, um, I'll show you a series of links, but we'll also send it along with the, um, with the recording of the webinar. And uh, you can uh, click in and see uh, the Canada Hub, where, um, where how Canada is measuring how closely we, how close we are to um, achieving the SDGs that we um, sort of are focusing on. And um, so the sustainable development goals, essentially, it's about having a shared language about uh, what we need to work towards to ensure that sustainable development is possible. And when we talk about sustainable development, essentially, we're talking about um, ensuring that we have the that we are uh, engaging in the kind of development we need to engage in but in a way that is um that in a way that promotes equity and that includes an everyone and does does not compromise the ability of future generations to uh, be able to engage in that development in an inclusive and in a sustainable way so it's a, essentially, it's about the present, it's about how we do things in the present and how we do things in the future so that they're sustainable. Sustainable, not just based on resources, but based on the kind of world we want to live in, essentially. Um, and the 2030 agenda, so when it was passed, the 2030 agenda um, is kind of a, a timeline and we're giving ourselves all these nation states, these 193 uh, nation states, um, gave, we're giving ourselves until 2030 to achieve the SDGs. Now, that may be ambitious, uh, but we want to get as far as possible as we can. And one of the ways, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the ways that we can um, see that is uh, by looking at, oh, excuse me, just a moment. <clears throat> so one of the ways that we can see that is um, each SDG, there are 17 of them, but each SDG has targets and then they have indicators. Targets kind of break down because you can see, uh, you can't see very well, but this is SDG 10 and SDG 10 is reduced inequalities. So um, one of the targets, and um, there's a hundred, there's 17 SDG goals, but there's 169 targets. And what that does is um, when you go to the uh, United Nations website, um, you can click on whatever SDG you're interested in learning about, you can see the targets, and then you can also see the indicators. So the targets are, the goal essentially broken down in sort of more manageable parts and the indicators are how are the the sort of the needle that are going to tell us have we advanced on this goal or not so here you see that the target is by 2030 40 percent of the population that has um uh, the lowest uh, income growth will, um, the indicator is uh, that we're going to measure, has that changed? Has that 40%, has the income of that 40% uh, um, grown it comparatively to, you know, the other, uh, the rest of the population? So it's uh, very interesting, and this website is um, going to be on that list, and it's uh, quite easy to use. And um, they um, also have updates around um, how COVID has affected uh, the uh, achievement of the SDGs, which is also very relevant. Now, 
why do we why look at volunteering and the SDGs? Well, we've already um, many many of you may be familiar with the um, with the uh, sur the general survey, Statistics Canada general sur social survey on giving, volunteering, and participating. And we know from that survey that 79% of all Canadians are involved in some form of volunteering, and that includes formal and informal volunteering. So it's quite the force. So there is no doubt that Canadian volunteers and all volunteers, but in, in this case, Canadian volunteers are already contributing to achieving the goals uh, in Canada, the SDGs in Canada. Secondly, we want to bring uh, volunteerism uh, to light within the SDG framework because um, the, we want to also uh, be clear that the goals are relevant to Canadian communities. You know, like. Um, the goals were developed from uh, the previous a previous version of, of the goals, if you like, were the Millennium Goals, and uh, those goals were, um, you know, focused on uh, child poverty and um, the SDGs. Uh, make it clear that all those goals are valid for all nations. Everybody can do better uh, at that because we all need to do better at that for it to be better for everyone. So um, it's, uh, it's about leaving no one behind and it's about everyone participating in the ways that they can according to their resources and to what people um, are able to do. Um, Thirdly, to demonstrate how organizations are working to achieve the goals. Now, there's uh, many, many, um, there's many, many businesses, many, many nonprofits uh, that are all have already identified which SDG goals uh, they are working towards. But there are many that have not. Right. So what what we want is that uh, bigger picture, uh, one of the contribution that we're making towards the goals and uh, for people also to realize you know that these goals are very aligned to mission they're very aligned to activities as well and uh fourth uh is to communicate to volunteers their impact in a clear and compelling way now here we're really making the connection between local and global so um and that is very compelling to volunteers. People find that uh, very interesting. It, uh, it's, it's a very strong motivator and um, to, for volunteer engagement, for maintaining volunteer engagement and for recruiting new volunteer engagement. And, if, um, and lastly, because the SDGs, they're kind of the, I, I think one of the really wonderful things about the SDGs is it, it enables us to communicate with in a shared language about common objectives um, and uh, with the targets broken down and the indicators that even amplifies the uh, clarity. But uh, the other thing that it helps us to do is if we're using the same framework to identify what's currently being accomplished, then we're also able to see where increased volunteer effort is needed. Okay, now I'd like to invite you to uh, have a look at these sustainable development goals. And in the chat, if you can tell me uh, which goals you or the volunteer in your organizations are contributing to achieve. And now when I say volunteer, uh, it could be um, a, grassroots, a grassroots group, uh, you and your neighbors got together and uh, uh, you're maintaining a community garden. Uh, it could be a nonprofit uh, organization, it could be a business that does uh, employer supported volunteering. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us which of the SDG goals uh, you feel um, that your organization or your group is uh, most um, can most effectively work on so we have different ones we have no poverty zero hunger good health and well-being and i really encourage everyone to go to the website to get a sense of you know 
the goals and the meaning behind the goals, because these are very broad, right? So uh, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation infrastructure, reduced inequalities. And this was this one actually was a surprise for me because this, this SDG, uh, SDG 10, is actually a lot about inclusion. And I fully realized that when I went into the site and started reading the targets and the indicators. Um, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And you'll see that 17 within the goals is the goal of working together uh, to achieve the goals. So uh, I must have said goals there about 100 times, but I think you see what I mean. So just to let you know, folks are responding in the chat and lots of SDGs that, that organizations and individuals are working on. SDG 4, we have another response of 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 10, and 17. Wow. So looking, another is looking at 4, 8, 9, and 10. Right. 4, 8, okay, great. 9 and Oh, decent work and economic growth. Excellent. Yes. And three, four, and 11. So good health and well-being, quality education, and sustainable cities and communities. Wonderful. And Wonderful. another responding that SDG4 is their main driver from programming, but they are looking into more environmental-based SDGs. So thanks, everybody, for all of the responses great to see that there are so many who have the SDGs top of mind in the work that they're doing. I think almost everybody's responded. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And, um, and I love the fact that, yeah, so um, we're going to see in a minute about primary, uh, the SDGs that are most closely related to your mission and your activities, and then the ones that you also contribute to. Thank you so much. So as we mentioned, uh, there are lots of good reason to start thinking about uh, the SDG goals in relation to your volunteer program, your volunteer group. Um, I'm, I'm using the word program here, but please take it very broadly. Um, so first of all, because it supports volunteer engagement and motivation. And here I also want to say volunteer re-engagement, because as we've seen, with the pandemic and with COVID, uh, now people who work with volunteers are not only finding that they have to put some effort into um, recruiting new volunteers, but also maybe, um, you know, uh, reconnecting with the volunteers that they had before the pandemic and seeing about, uh, you know, uh, them rejoining the agency if they had to stop. Secondly, to demonstrate the importance of volunteer activities to the organization, to the funders and other stakeholders. Um, and uh, lastly, to join the global momentum to achieve the SDGs. As I said, it's so important to have this shared language, these shared goals that we all agree upon. And um, that also reflects some of the root causes um, some of the some of the uh, root behaviors uh, that will help us to go forward um, with sustainable development. So again, uh, so I want to say a little uh, disclaimer here. So this is this webinar is a lot about just getting you to think about some possible options, right? And if you have already implemented some of these, if you've already got things going on. I definitely want to hear from you because uh, we're always looking to learn from our constituents. Uh, what worked for you? What did you try? What would you recommend? And um, so when we talk about integrating the SDGs in a very general way, and this is the structure that we'll use for the rest of the uh, presentation. First of all, um, the first thing to do is to start the conversation. Just, um, and this really is about awareness. Uh, do people know the SDGs in your organization? What do they think of them? Uh, what, 
which, uh, which SDGs do they think is the closest uh, related to your mission and activities? And then a really great, um, a really great question uh, that I really love because it's all about figuring out what you're already doing, right? Many, many of us, and I, you know, I don't like to say 100% because, you know, that's just not uh, the case, but so many of us are already working towards the SDGs. And part of the, part of the process is how do you make what you're already doing visible, visible to yourself and visible to your constituents and visible to your volunteers? And lastly, plan and implement small goals. Again, a lot of what we're going to be talking about here today is about how to enrich things that you are already doing in your volunteer program to integrate the SDGs. We understand that especially now, people who are working with volunteer resources very often are multitasking. They're very often uh, managing quite a lot already. So the idea is not, and obviously, and this is something we had in mind when we were planning the webinar, which is like, oh, you know, another thing, you know, uh, people who work with volunteers are going to, you know, start thinking, oh, no, like, not another great idea that I'm going to have, you know, but um, essentially what we're looking to do is uh, look at some of the things that you've already got going with your volunteers and how can you use the SDGs to enrich that and also um, to help to achieve the SDGs and make the SDGs more visible. Okay, so now I have two examples. So we talked about starting a conversation and uh, our second item was figure out what you're already doing. So essentially, um, depending on how well you know the SDGs or I might even say like how well you think you know the SDGs because I have to say they're a great read and uh, it was uh, very educational to read them. And as I mentioned earlier, because the titles are quite broad, it might be, uh, it might be easy to uh, think that you understand what that SDG is aiming for. So for example, one of my own misconceptions was when I saw health and well-being, I, um, I was thinking about concepts like self-efficacy and stuff like that. But if you look at health and well-being, it's really, it's about health, it's about addiction, it's about vaccination. And so um, that was actually really helpful uh, to, to know, right? Because if you want to be uh, figuring out, you know, which ones, uh, which ones you're doing, uh, which ones you're most closely aligned with in your organization, then you want to be clear on them. So I would recommend that the first thing uh, to do is to go to the United Nations site and have a look at the SDGs. And you could even do this uh, with your group of volunteers or what have you. And so here I made up a fictional agency, uh, the ABC uh, Literacy Organization. And uh, so the first thing, that this organization would have done would be to have a look at all the SDGs, then to make a list of their outward face or of their or of their community programs. So you see them here, right here, school reading program, family story time, these are their programs. And then, um, as you can see, they have two, there are two SDGs that are really primary, like one of our participants mentioned earlier. There are two of the SDGs that are really primary and a few other ones that are, you know, secondary or that they are contributing to, right? And this is really key when you're identifying the SDGs around the work that you are already doing. It's really important to, um, you know, because I, I know that in many agencies, you're probably touching on like 17 or 12 or 13 of them. But when you want to set them up as, um, you know, goals that you're going to be accountable for, you definitely want to be choosing the ones that are closest to your missions, closest to your activities, and that you are going to be accountable for, right? These are, and so that it's, uh, 
so that it's clear what the priorities are. Uh, you can also have a look at the um, targets. Um, I know that um, Canada has also selected a few targets. So it's all a matter of we're contributing, but really we want to get a sense of uh, when you're identifying what you're already doing is get a sense of what you know is closest to your mission. What do you do really well, right? And then there's always, that's to start, then there's always room for development. So as you can see, a couple of the activities here. So for example, uh, let's see. So let's say the lunchtime book club, which would be a book club for uh, kids where a hot lunch is served. And, um, you know, they discuss a book that they've been reading. So this definitely fulfills the two main, uh, the two main SDGs that this ABC literacy organization is aligned with, but then because they collect books from the neighborhood book box and they are recycling books, that means that they are also um, attaining the SDG of responsible consumption and production. And because they're also serving lunch to uh, participants who may not always be able to get a nutritious meal, uh, they are also contributing to zero hunger. But it's not in their main ones, right? They don't, they're not uh, a food security organization, but they are also contributing to zero hunger. So that's one way of identifying um, your main, uh, the main SDGs that are closest to your mission, and also some of the other ones that are identified uh, that you're contributing to. And um, many, many of you also belong to regional uh, associations or collectives um, or more informal. So, for example, this ABC Literacy Organization belongs to the Literacy Council of ABC Region, okay? And so that means that they are also uh, contributing to uh, SDG 17 partnerships for the goals. So they are collaborating with other agencies that are aligned along the same goals as them to advance the goals. Okay. I'm just no. going to stop you here and just let yeah. you know, one of the participants in the chat has said that in their organization, they've started to align their, their volunteer roles with the organization's strategic priorities, for example. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. So for example, volunteering for nourishment, which also fits with SDG number two. Exactly. That is, that's fantastic. And I am very, very happy to hear that because that is a suggestion I'm going to make to you later. But that's, uh, that's excellent. I'm very glad to hear that. Thank you for pointing that out, Deb. And thank you, uh, participant, for bringing that up. So now I also wanted to show you, that's very small, no worries. My next slide is a kind of a, a closer shot of this, but I wanted to show you, um, this is Orange, which is a financial company. And so here we're not promoting Orange. I'm using this, uh, this visual because I thought it was excellent. And it had a lot of components that uh, might be helpful for um, an organization that's looking to identify and communicate the SDGs that they are currently working on. So here you have a general statement, and I'll, uh, I'll show you um, in the next slide the text of that, which is also excellent. Then they have selected six of the SDGs that are the ones that, as they, um, as they say, that uh, they can have the biggest impact on and for which they will hold themselves accountable. And then for each SDG, they have, uh, I'm going to show you this, this is a close up and this uh, link will also be in the links, uh, not because we're promoting this organization, but if you wanted to have a model to inspire your work um, in maybe looking at that. So, um, okay, perfect. So I wanted to point out, yeah, the, this, uh, this sentence, right, which I found was very well put together. We've identified six of the 17 SDGs set by the UN on which we can have the biggest impact, impact and for which we will hold ourselves accountable. 
and in addition to these six SDGs, we contribute to five additional SDGs. So what they've done is they've identified the primary, the secondary, they've identified how they are contributing to those to that SDG. And um, they also have like in orange here, like a little a future direction. Okay, so we have um, this model and this model as well. And it's just so uh, that we can get like a sense of what uh, what it might look like. Okay. So do we have any questions about, um, actually, I have a question for you. Now, if, um, how did you identify those, those groups that have identified the primary and the secondary or the uh, SDGs? Um, how did you identify them? Uh, did you sit down with the group or did you sit down with your volunteers? Uh, they love to hear how you got buy-in. Uh, did you start a conversation with the board? Um, so I'd love your thoughts and comments on that, um, as well as any questions you might have about uh, going about uh, thinking about what are we already doing, because that's really key. And, you know, like there's also, there's not just one way, right? Um, we know our uh, organizational cultures best. Uh, we know how to, um, how to bring in ideas so that, you know, we remain open to them and, uh, and that they have um, a, a synergetic effect. They have a strengthening effect on our, uh, on our groups and our, our organizations. So one participant has responded that for them, it was mainly through their mission and strategic focus for service. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, another one has said that it, they initially flushed out uh, any analyzing vision, mission, and aims, and then pulled this information into strategic planning. Fantastic. <laughs> That's really, really excellent. I'm very, very happy to hear that. And uh, I'm hoping that it was a, a very, uh, very positive and mobilizing uh, uh, exercise for, for the team uh, or for the group. Okay, and now, uh, now we're going to talk about uh, those uh, that that third box that talked about um, implementing small doable uh, actions in, um, in processes and tools that you've probably already got developed and how we can enrich those with the SDGs to increase volunteer engagement or to maintain volunteer engagement and also to have our organizations uh, to make the um, SDGs visible and to deliberately work towards the SDGs so that we have that, uh, we're, we join that collective momentum. Now, um, so one of the, like the, the format that I was thinking of uh, presenting these, uh, these small actionable things that you could do, I chose to use the volunteer management cycle. Now, there are lots of versions of the volunteer management cycle. There's versions where you have eight steps, lots of, you know, four steps, five steps, etc. But um, for the purposes of a one hour webinar, uh, where we were already touching on a number of things, I uh, went with, uh, sort of made things very, very uh, uh, essential. And uh, so went with planning, recruitment, volunteer, uh, learning, and support and management. And of course, um, when we talk about planning, uh, we're talking about everything that needs to be done before we welcome volunteers into our agency or um, everything that, uh, it, you know, and so that includes tools, processes, uh, needs assessments with staff, staff training about working with volunteers. Um, aligning the tasks to the outcomes, uh, position descriptions, all kinds of things. And of course, I do want to say these are not linear. We keep going, 
it keeps going essentially. So um, as many people know, uh, volunteer resource uh, management or working with volunteers, because we're talking about a social phenomenon, changes all the time, changes with society, changes with people, changes with needs. So um, we're constantly going around to keep our uh, to keep our, our volunteer engagement uh, fresh and relevant. So when we talk about planning all those tools, all that preparation uh, so that we're ready when the volunteers come in, we know what they uh, will be doing, we know uh, the context, we're able to provide them with the tools. Secondly, recruitment. And this is where we engage and now uh, re-engage volunteers, as we discussed earlier, uh, a kind of an additional, um, an additional aspect of the work of uh, people who work with volunteers is to maybe bring people back in and to bring new people in as well. Thirdly, volunteer learning. That's where we develop any kind of learning, uh, and that might be around orientation, and that would be about the organization, the mission, uh, the vision, uh, the activities, the populations uh, that we work with, um, the people, the needs, the context, all of that. And then um, more, uh, more specifically around the task. What does the volunteer need to know about how to do this task? Um, what is what? What does it look like? Um, that kind of thing, and of course, continuing education, ongoing learning all the time. And the last one is support and management. And here I'm talking about support and management of the volunteers, but also of the volunteer pr program or of the volunteer uh, group, right? Because we know that um, people who work in the voluntary sector formally or informally in businesses, um, just want to keep saying it, right? Because um, sometimes it's seen as a very uh, narrow uh, sector, but it's such a wide sector and it's so beautifully diverse with people finding all kinds of ways to contribute. So it, it, um, it's worth stating and restating. Um, so that means um, how we are going to support the volunteers, but also how how do we uh, keep the uh, the volunteer program relevant? How do we keep it uh, meeting the needs of the organization? How do we keep it um, how do we keep it supportive of the volunteers uh, getting good results? Uh, what have you? So we're going to go around uh, and talk about how at each stage we can integrate uh, some aspect of the SDGs to, um, to increase volunteer engagement. So um, the first thing uh, we talked about planning. So definitely start a conversation with the leadership and board about the SDGs. Um, um, there are lots of tools around. We are developing some tools too, some self-directed learning, some um, uh, something that you can send, uh, you know, uh, a link to, and people can just get some information about what the SDGs are. Uh, consult staff and volunteers and other stakeholders to determine how the organization is already aligning with the SDGs and how the volunteer program is already aligning with the SDGs. And um, I know that sometimes when we do uh, needs assessments to get us, and I'm saying like a needs assessment, but essentially what it is is people sitting down and getting a sense of, um, you know, what what's the work that needs to be done how many people would it be better to have to do this work etc um, what are the areas that need maintaining what are some of the areas that need development and um, the sdg framework actually is great for a needs assessment because it, it really will tell you what it is that you're already doing and um, also possibly some areas of development and lastly, develop a workable plan to easily integrate the SDGs in um, various tools and processes that already exist. So set up, a, set up maybe a, a 
because a lot of the work of working with volunteers is about it's in the present, but it's also a lot of planning. So uh, you might say, uh, okay, for September's recruitment, our recruitment message will contain to the images uh, with a sentence about the SDGs that our organization is uh, already working on. And as we go through these, so now we just did planning, I'm gonna move to recruitment, but as we go through these, I'd like you to keep in mind um, some of the things that you're already doing, which we've heard about and I would love to hear more of. I'm very, very happy to hear that that's already happening. And also some of the things that might be feasible for you to do. Now, in terms of integrating the SDGs into your recruitment process, um, you can easily integrate the SDGs into your recruitment messages, uh, put it on your website, um, and uh, put it on the position descriptions. Um, just make uh, like visible the SDGs that you're attaining and a simple statement about why it matters to you to attain these SDGs, how it's connected to your mission. And uh, that has like a double kind of uh, benefit because as we know, sometimes people, um, if we don't really uh, make it this very intentional, people can get into their volunteer silos right? I am, I come in on Tuesdays, I do this, or I am doing this. But um, this helps uh, to have more of a, you know, a global vision in terms of the organization and the work that I'm doing for the organization or for the group, but also um, in terms of how this local translates to global, right? That I, that the work that we're doing is local, but it's working to achieve some global common objectives, which is very compelling. And um, in terms of recruitment, uh, so promote volunteer opportunities according to the SDGs that they contribute to achieving and integrate the global perspective. So for example, um, and this is particularly interesting, uh, you know, for positions that are, you know, um, sort of removed, right? For if somebody is doing translation or they're setting up tables or they're answering the phone, uh, they, may not under, they may not see what they're doing as working towards gender equality, right? But if they're answering the phone at a women's center, um, you know, that supports uh, women's health and women's, um, uh, you know, accessing their rights and what have you, they certainly are working towards that SDG. So that's really important. And um, okay, and now we're going to move into how to integrate the SDGs into volunteer learning. So again, keep in mind, what are some of the things that you're already doing? And what are some of the things that might be possible for you to do? Uh, you know, we're looking for it. I've spoken to a lot of uh, subject matter experts on the SDGs, and they tell me two things, patience and perseverance, right? And small steps, because uh, that's what's most sustainable to do. Very important. So um, again, uh, include the SDGs and how they align to the mission in the orientation and training sessions. Uh, rather than simply, this is where you'll be sitting, you know, this is what you're going to be doing, this is how you need to be doing this. Uh, just keep connecting the, the position, how it fits into the organization's mission, and how that fits into the SDGs. We're, we're widening uh, the, the spectrum, and we're, and we're actually shedding a true light on the um, impact in the engagement of volunteers. Uh, secondly, integrate the SDGs in your program documents, volunteer guides, task aids. If you have, if somebody, again, uh, go back to the um, example of answering the phones, if you have a task aid, um, I, you know, uh, that uh, sort of a list of what you have to do to transfer a call without hanging up on the person, I know I certainly always need that. Um, if uh, you have that by the phone and it's got the SDGs 
that your organization is uh, aligned with, then uh, that's, that's another reminder, uh, self-directed learning tools, et cetera. And uh, lastly, on this point, something really important, use the SDGs to explore the global aspects of local issues. So let's say you're working on housing, housing issues, you're advocating for more um, affordable housing in your neighborhood. So locally, affordable housing in your neighborhood is a problem, but it's a problem in the whole city. And it's an issue in many, many cities, right? And um, it's also an opportunity to discuss, again, with the SDG uh, framework, uh, because the SDGs are interrelated, um, it's what happens, like what other, what other SDGs are affected by um, affordable housing, right? Or if, um, if you're uh, thinking about, um, you know, uh, climate change, how is poverty, inequality, how are they linked to climate change? And that is, um, that's actually uh, very important to know. And will actually, um, I think it's also very compelling for the volunteer to know that they are working locally, but that they are working on issues that are felt globally and that they're aligning with so many other volunteers to work towards um, achieving the SDG goals. And lastly, when we talk about integrating the SDGs into your managing um, of the SDG, uh, of, the, um, of your volunteer program, and then we talked about with volunteers and your program, um, you could include an SDG component in volunteer check-ins. So, so far, you know, we have, this many hours done, uh, you know, like this, our, our team is doing, you know, this, uh, so this, these are our targets, what have you. So, and it could also be um, an individual check-ins, right? Uh, to, um, because, and it could be for, um, you know, congratulations, but also for sometimes to realigning a volunteer with the objective of the task and, um, you know, the objective of the actions around that and by aligning it with, um, you know, this is, this is the objective of this position. So aligning it with the mission again and the SDG uh, goals. And um, for recognitions, for recognition, very, very compelling. Uh, so um, there was a survey in 2013, some of you may have heard me uh, talking about it before, that um, certainly um, talked about what kind of recognition volunteers uh, preferred, and that is number one was to know the impact of their work. They want to know, am I making a difference? That's such a fundamental, fundamental question. And uh, using an SDG framework uh, might be very, very helpful for that. So for example, if you have somebody who's mentoring youth in the community garden, uh, you could, uh, you know, you could tell the team or the individuals, hey, uh, you know, this year we spent 5,000 hours, um, you know, contributing to SDG, I think it's 13, is climate change, and SDG 10, uh, which is um, inequalities. Um, and so, um, again, we're still connecting, right? And you can do this, this recognition. Uh, you can do that qualitatively. I just use numbers and uh, in truth, a lot of people understand numbers, funders understand numbers, sometimes um, other bodies understand numbers uh, better, but you can also do, so that's uh, quantitative, but you can also go qualitative. Like you can say something like, you can use testimonials, you can say we've achieved these SD, you know, we've contributed to achieving these, um, these, you know, goal number four and uh, 13 or and 12. And you, you can also have uh, pictures that show uh, how you did that, testimonials, stories, um, a combination of both is best. 
because then you're reaching the broadest, uh, you're reaching uh, most people. Uh, but um, but you can do, uh, there's many, many ways to reflect the impact of their work to the volunteers. And lastly, uh, I'd make the point of advocating for your volunteer program using the SDGs. Um, if you can measure and report, right, when you're being accountable, then that entails some form of measurement. So measuring and reporting the impact of the volunteer program with the SDGs that are aligned to the mission. Um, so uh, using numbers and always align it to the mission. And sometimes we have, uh, we have trouble doing that. Uh, I know that certainly people, sometimes folks who do not work with volunteers have trouble um, they understand on the surface, but the importance of the volunteer program and the importance of having somebody who can uh, really support the volunteers so that you have enough volunteers so that the uh, so that the mission is achieved in a way that you can be proud of, like uh, with quality and that you have enough volunteers to meet all the needs in the community or as much as possible. Okay, so we've been around the uh, volunteer cycle. We've talked about the sort of, you know, <laughs> contracted volunteer cycle. We've talked about planning. We've talked about recruitment. We've talked about volunteer learning and managing. Um, now I'd like you to tell me, tell me a little bit about, do you have any questions? As we went around, were there some things that sounded like some things that you could do uh, that you could, uh, where you could easily uh, integrate the SDGs on your position descriptions or a statement in your volunteer policy or um, something you could bring to a next uh, volunteer meeting or something you could bring up during volunteer week that's really coming up? That's a great opportunity. So we have a response from one participant who is saying that they are in the process of integrating the SDGs and the organization's mission into the operations plan for the upcoming year. Wonderful, wonderful. And I know that's, uh, that's quite the task. So kudos, uh, kudos to you because it's, um, I, uh, I feel it's a very sustainable way to do it and uh, that will involve leadership. Very good. Another practical piece is around um, one participant is saying that they're overhauling their website. And so they're thinking that this would be a great place to, to include this information on the, um, on the SDGs on their website. Yes, fantastic. And uh, please go ahead to the uh, United Nations uh, website. They have a lot of downloadable, they have the squares, the you know, the circle they have, um, and, and you got to say, like their visual is very, very appealing and very accessible, uh, you know, to its plain language. So that's great. Excellent. And the last simple one is yes. that um, they, a person uh, on, on the webinar is saying that they really like the idea of integrating the SDG images and information into volunteer role positions and description. Fantastic. Fantastic, excellent. And um, I just, uh, just to uh, include, we're almost uh, at the end, but I did want to say, like, I, I realize um, uh, that it's very important to lead from where you are, right? Not everybody on this uh, webinar is an executive director or president of the board, uh, you know, uh, but it, um, uh, so um, I have two, uh, I asked two subject matter experts and uh, they helped me to develop a tool around how to integrate the SDGs into your organization, Steve Brunel and Caroline Aubin. Um, they're from the uh, SADC Nicolet Bécancourt. And I asked them, listen, if somebody was trying is not like top management or what have you, how, what are the selling points for the SDGs? And um, they worked with a lot of organizations and these are the ones that they brought up is that first of all, there's, you know, it, sometimes you don't even have to do more 
it's about making it visible. So there's already alignment with the SDGs in the organization. And there's a lot of positive visibility for the organization, as well as funder appreciation. So SDG language is a language that many funders are already speaking. Uh, some uh, funding agencies already are even asking what SDGs uh, you know, are being, uh, are you uh, currently uh, attaining? And uh, working with the SDGs, it can be very motivating because it, these SDGs um, appeal to your value, values and also to your desire to make a difference as an individual, but also as a collective. And uh, lastly, um, SDGs, um, organizations driven by SDGs are very attractive to employees and volunteers. I was on a webinar um, just the other day, and four different people who had uh, posted internships uh, related to the SDGs said that they had received many, many, um, you know, uh, lots of interest and lots of quality applicants. And now, um, just before we close, I'd just like to get back to those four questions, our promise of by the end of the webinar, you'll be able to answer these four questions. So just to review, uh, so what are the United Nations 17 development goals? Um, it's shared language to create a common vision um, that, uh, that goes beyond borders and doesn't leave anyone behind. And it's about the present and it's about the future and it's about us aligning together um, what are the benefits of integrating the SDGs in your volunteer program? Uh, it helps to broaden our understanding of how volunteers and organizations are contributing to the goals, and it can support volunteer engagement as it supports the achievement of SDGs. How do you determine which SDGs most closely align with your organization's mission? Small steps, start with a conversation. The best question is, how are you already aligning with the SDGs? And again, uh, pick the ones where you can have the greatest impact and lead from where you are. Uh, and if now is not the time to have the conversation, because sometimes it's not the time, try it, try another time. And buy-in is key for sustainability. You don't wanna start a process that you won't really be able to, that'll drop off if you leave the organization or what have you. So um, for the sake of the program and also for the sake of the SDGs. And lastly, what are some in concrete feasible ways to integrate the SDGs? Consider the volunteer management cycle, enrich something you are already doing, something easy, and ask yourself, how can, what is the best way in your organization with the means that you have uh, that you can demonstrate the impact of that particular SDG. And again, um, it's local level action and universality are key to achieving the SDGs. Local level action all over in different ways, according to the resources that we have, um, are what are going to feed into the achievement of the SDG. So um, it's very important work. Uh, I think that uh, if you were almost out of time, but I think we have like another minute to answer our poll question. Deb, would you like to launch the poll? Here we go. Uh, so if you felt like you were uh, motivated and uh, that you liked what you heard uh, today and that you might want to go ahead, please tell us what tool, uh, what tools might make it most easier, might, mo might make it easiest for you. And uh, more, more than one answer is possible, I believe. Yeah. So excellent. Oh, very good. Okay, perfect. Very nice. So we have infographics running ahead, ready to, go, ready to go PowerPoint presentations. We've already got those and we'll be making those available. Um, not immediately, but they're coming, I guess, uh, maybe by the end of the month or mid next month. Yeah. 
perfect. Oh, excellent. Very good. Thank you very much for doing that. Okay, so these are some of the resources. They're tiny. Don't worry, we have some from Volunteer Canada, United Nations, and other resources. Lots of people are doing wonderful things around the SDGs. And, um, and this concludes our uh, webinar. So thank you so, so much for uh, joining us. I really appreciated, uh, I'm sure that Deb, and, uh, Deb did as well, really appreciated your participation and your comments. And um, we look forward to seeing um, how you uh, can integrate your, the SDGs in your volunteer program. If you're already integrating the SDGs in your volunteer program, I would love to hear from you. My email is mgelfusa at volunteer.ca. Thank you very much for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon.